Good evening. I would like to thank Leadership Troy Alumni for the opportunity to speak here tonight. On May 5th, Troy City School District voters will have the opportunity to preserve the quality of education for all children without increasing their taxes. Troy City Schools run about for renewable 5.9 mil operating levy. This levy will not raise your taxes one penny. All schools have been, been faced with rising costs, required increased expenses, with reduced and with reduced state and federal funding. The dollars and salary are used to maintain the current level of education and help fund the day-to-day -day operations of our schools. The renewal of this levy will continue to generate approximately $2.8 million annually. This levy represents about 6% of our budget. This Board of Education Administration are committed to using your tax dollars wisely. There are tax dollars as well. I live and pay taxes in Troy myself. The district realizes the financial world we live in, as with most districts, funding is our big concern. The district's free reduced percentage remain high, so we do have a high poverty rate still in our schools. Our schools are a good value, though. We have made numerous reductions to within our means while protecting the quality of education. School districts are often criticized for not doing that. By asking you to renew a five-point levy at no additional cost to taxpayers, living with our means is exactly what we're doing. We reduce our expenses in many areas, including staffing, supplies, utility consumption, to name a few. School districts are required by law to collect a minimum of 20 mils of property tax for the operation. In Troy, we're only correcting 21.98 mils. So homeowners allowing this to expire would reduce our real estate taxes by 1.98 mils, not 5.9. This amounts to less than 20 cents a day for a $100,000 home. We have a quality education system in place, but it's not without cost. In closing, we need this money to continue to operate effective schools in this community. That's why I'm asking for your support. I believe in the city of Troy, I believe in the schools, and I believe in our citizens. Thank you for supporting Troy City Schools on May 5th. Our renewal levies has been supported and endorsed by the Troy Area Conference as well. I think good Troy, a strong school system, important to our business community. Thank you very much. Good evening, and thank you all for being here. I would like to take a moment for you to get to know me. I am the daughter of a welder. I went to six different elementary schools. I started working at the age of 15, and my parents collected 50% of all paychecks for room and board. I moved out of the house at 18, but I owned my own home at 19. I was a medical lab technician in the US Army. I raised two wonderful children as a single mom. I became a certified financial planner and built an American Express financial planning practice in Louisiana and sold it after 12 years. I worked for the Governor's Office of Women's Services in Louisiana and helped 57 homeless women find jobs. I was a campaign director for United Way after completing one campaign. I was recruited by Allstate and moved to Ohio. I have lived here in Troy for 11 years and started five businesses and currently own and operate three. I served as president of Troy Main Street when we brought Mumford & Sons and the Downtown Farmers Market to Troy. Lastly, I served on the Mayor's Roundtable for the past three years. So here I am, Patty Rose asking for your vote. So what would I do differently if I were mayor? I would have town hall meetings. I would stop spending so much money on consulting fees. The city owns two businesses that are losing nearly $1 million a year between the arena and the golf course. I would stop those heavy losses and make them profitable. I would find savings elsewhere and hire only full-time firefighters. I would stop city traveling to Japan and Germany and instead ask companies in America to move here. I would pursue a satellite university campus to locate in Troy. I would have built a parking structure downtown with restrooms and a litany of other things long before I would have invested millions in Treasure Island. There is so much more I'd like to share, but of course time is short tonight. So thank you, Troy Leadership alumni, 
And thank you all for this opportunity to be here tonight. Let's let the questions begin. Good evening. I'm honored and privileged uh, to serve the citizens and, and guests and friends of this great city. I've been a part of this community for more than 45 years. I've demonstrated my commitment and loyalty to this city through civic involvement, education, community service, and by serving on a variety of organizations and boards. I'm a proud graduate of Leadership Troy. Over the years, I've gained experience, I've given leadership, and I've demonstrated my love and commitment for this community of Troy. During my tenure as your mayor, we have achieved and enhanced three main goals. Increase strong economic efforts and successes, maintain financial stability through some tough national and state economic times. We have received a AA1 bond rating, one of the highest you can receive. We have cash reserves, and we continue to receive awards for financial stewardship. Improved our quality of life, continue in service as your mayor. One, my wife and family need to sort, support my decision, check. I have the energy and excitement to continue to be a cheerleader for Troy, check, that I continue to have the support of the community. I would appreciate your continued support with your vote on Tuesday, May 5th. I'm ready, I'm willing, and I'm able to continue, and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, this question is for the uh, candidates for mayor. Uh, what makes you different from your opponent? Mrs. Rose, you go first. Well, I'll state the obvious first. I'm a woman. Sorry, that was my little comedic moment. <laughs> I, uh, I, I do know that the city has a $52 million budget, and the job description of mayor is to be the CEO or chief executive officer of the town. And uh, being someone that has uh, managed several businesses over my lifetime, actually more than several, uh, I think that I could be a very good candidate for that. I'm an idea person as far as being a big picture thinker. I think that vision is a lot to do with uh, what happens in a mayor's office. Uh, I know that there's a lot of people that control a lot of things, but the mayor can certainly provide the vision and the leadership required to run a town. Mr. Beamish. Well, first of all, I'm a male in that gender. Cool. <laughs> Thought of equal time there. So, working, but I do have a working knowledge of city government. I also have a tremendous experience in this community. Uh, I have had a lot of experience in different relationships in this co community with businesses and partnerships and organizations. I think my management style is a little different uh, because I. I do set high standards, and we have achieved. It's proven that we have achieved. Uh, we hire good people with expertise in the field. Uh, we empower them to do a, uh, their job and do it well. And in our organization, everyone is valued. Everyone has a role to play to make this team uh, a very successful team. And so, and I encourage uh, and stress that we build on positive successes. And let's not forget. I think one of the things that I like to smile, have a sense of humor, and say, uh, uh, give everybody a, a kind word. Thank you. Next question. This question is of or opposed to part-time firefighters. Mr. Beamish. Well, I support uh, the Chief's recommendation and that of Council. Uh, currently, all of our firefighters are full-time, and they are all paramedics. On my watch, there's no plans, hasn't been a plan, to reduce full-time levels of firefighters. Uh, there's an effort to increase, we're trying to have an effort to increase safety for our citizens and decrease response time. We will hire uh, certified part-time firefighters that are also well-trained, and they will augment the staffing levels that are current. So we want to enhance an already well-trained, qualified, full-time staff with additional uh, certified EMT slash paramedic uh, personnel. They will be trained. Thank you. Mrs. Rose. 
Uh, I actually believe that if there's lots of places that you can cut spending, but I wouldn't cut it in a place where the job description is about saving lives and saving property. Uh, we've got lots of positions all throughout the city, and that's not in anyone's job description to risk their life and save that of others. So I think that it's really important that we have um, an attitude uh, and a, um, a responsibility that's a little bit different. My experience as a business owner and hired employees is really difficult and different when you have part-time staff. Part-timers have a little different attitude. They may be just building a resume to move on somewhere else after having a conversation with several um, or several, more than several firemen, uh, I, I think it's a real concern that they wouldn't have uh, been as prepared and they may not come to work and they'll be leaving sooner and it's very expensive to have um, staff moving all the time and I think that relates the same way with regard to that. After a little bit of investigation too, there is a, uh, a, a city in Ohio, uh, the city of Green, that actually was sued for doing the same thing, and the, unfortunately the union won, and they were able to, uh, they had to pay back a bunch of money because it broke laws of the uh, Ohio uh, Bargaining Act. Next question, please. Also for the candidates, do you support phase one and phase two of Hobart Arena expansion, and why? Mrs. Rose. I have to say at this time, knowing that that entity has lost uh, $670,000 last year, I would actually slow down in that process and see if we couldn't make that a little more profitable first. Uh, I do know that there is a need for upgrade, but I think that upgrade ought to come when we show that it can make profit. It has lost millions of dollars over the years, although a wonderful entity and an asset to this town it's, it's a business, and government does not have a history of running business very well, and I think that we need to turn that around and possibly um, get an outside company that actually runs arenas, a production company, and at least get it to the point where it's not losing quite so much money before I would start investing in it. Mr. Beach. I would uh, continue to remind you that we do have reserves uh, in cash reserves, and we also have an a, a double-A one bond rating in our favor. We need the amenities to uh, meet the needs of all citizens of all ages. Uh, our park system is for citizen use. Same goes for the arena, the pool, the golf course. Uh, each brings wellness that we hear about so much. It brings economic value to our community with the activities the events and the visitors that come into our city. Look what has occurred in just the recent years, and we all agree that those benefits were great beyond the actual venue that took place. Our Visitors Bureau would uh, validate the economic impact that each event had for the citizens of Troy and for the businesses in Troy. The best part, they are our Troy facilities. Thank you. Next question. Scott Hornberger, Troy Community Radio. This uh, question is for Mr. Herman. Uh, what will happen if the renewal levy does not pass? Well, right off the bat, we, we collect about 2.8 million a year, so we, we would be short that. So to begin with, we would probably have to readjust our budget some more, uh, look at our staff and look at, look at what we could do to make that fit. And we would probably have to come back on the ballot to try to regain that. Next question. How is, do you see Treasure Island being used as an economic development tool? Uh, how will you proceed with its completion, or will you abandon the project as it stands? Mr. Beamish. Well, first of all, I support the Council's decision to move forward with the Riverfront Development Projects that includes Treasure Island Marina and the Treasure Island Park. Uh, first of all, you need to understand that Treasure Island and the marina and the park are our property. We ask everybody else to maintain their properties. We should do likewise. Uh, we've seen the value uh, from other communities investing in the river. Don't have to go too far than to go to Dayton and see the river skate and see businesses gravitating to the, uh, to the river. Another recreational opportunity exists for the citizens and visitors to participate. 
We have already seen private donations and received grants in support of those projects. We received validation from the Ohio's Great Corridor, the Army Corps of Engineers, a national study, UD River Stewart have endorsed us, and the UD Business School, both undergraduate and master's programs, have also uh, supported us. Uh, past events along the river in a recreational corridor have proven the success of gravitating and using the river as an asset to your community. Thank you. Mrs. Rose. Well, I certainly appreciate that council and the city government has decided to move forward, but I do think there's been a lot of surveys out of the people, and the people are the, um, the ones paying for it, and the consensus seems to be that this is not a good idea. Uh, I would think for sure that it needs to be stopped and rethought of. I might have approached it a little bit different from an economic standpoint because it is millions of dollars on a building that Hobart built a long time ago for a place for their employees to hang out and have a picnic. We have to make a decision if that's the best place to put our money. You know, if they build it, they will come. It's not necessarily a philosophy of business that's very wise. Um, and there's not a lot of folks that go down there. We have issues with it flooding every year and the costs involved with that. Um, I tried to see the, the, the new lighthouse from the bridge and, and you can't see it. This is not a place that is seen very easily. Uh, I would have, as a business person, I would have approached 25A North first and actually got some private investors and, and made that a great artery before I had an entrance to a $3 million project, and that's just the first cost. It'll be ongoing every year. And I'm not necessarily saying it has to end, but it needs to be rethought. I would have to find out how far we were into it if I were to become elected for January, but, um, but we'll have to evaluate it then. Next question for the candidate. What plans do you have to curtail Troy's drug epidemic um, including heroin, a heroin issue. Mrs. Rose. I think that this is a very serious problem. After a little bit of research, it's quite clear, it's not hard to even find, that DARE programs don't work. I talked with folks about it, and they said that they're in, the, in, the, in the hallways of the campus of the Troy High School, there's probably three drug deals a day in between every class. Um, I had several people in my office in one week that shared experiences of deaths that they know of kids. I have a dear friend that lost his son um, when he was a senior. Bottom line is, I think we need to do something radical. I think it needs to be a big deal. I think it needs to shake up the kids and maybe even make them a little mad. I do have a plan, an idea. I have to work with the schools on it. I'm a prior military person. I put them all in uniforms to start. Boy, that, they won't have any time to think about anything but those doggone uniforms every day. I would, uh, I, would, I would definitely bring in drug dogs more often. I would, have, instead of spending $80,000 on a lighthouse, I would spend it on grandmas and grandpas and have them line the hallways and, uh, and start building relationships and talking to the kids. They're not afraid to catch them. They wouldn't be afraid to catch them. Why not do something like that? These are radical ideas. The Japanese have kids in school cleaning and being the janitors for the school. If we lose the levy, Mr. Sherman, we might need to talk about that. <laughs> but I think the kids need to get busy, and they need to not be thinking about anything but something different. And uh, let me tell you, when you put on a uniform, it changes everything. It makes an even playing field. Thank you. Mr. Beamish? People make choices. Some make good choices. Some make bad choices. I believe our DARE program is supported, and it is supported by three resource officers that are law enforcement officers. That's more than most communities have available. They teach good decision-making skills at early ages, and they role-play making different choices. They empower trust and respect in law enforcement. They continue to, uh, with education on the dangers of drug and alcohol use. Our detective division works with informants to intervene and collaborates with all sorts of other agencies. Yes, we do have a problem, but it's no different than any of the other best communities around our area. Prevention through DARE, I think, is a key ingredient. We can do more, perhaps DARE 2 program, at the high school level, reinforcing the decision-making skills they learn in elementary, especially dealing with peer pressure and bullying. Thank you. 
Next question. This question is for the mayoral candidates. Uh, what do you envision for the new open space at the Hobart site? Mr. Beamish. Well, first of all, you're going to see green space. Uh, and hopefully the grass will grow soon. And, and it's a reason for that. We're taking our time. Uh, we work closely with ITW, Hobart Brothers. Uh, Detroit Development Council is going to market that along with the support of the city. Our city council has already rezoned that area, so it'll be more office commercial use. We want high quality jobs, yes. We also want to have a good lead in look to our downtown. And yes, I also see being on Long Water Street the value to uh, riverfront development activities, much like the Dayton Riverscape has done with their business and industry coming along the river. Thank you. Mrs. Rose. Well, I actually think that we need to, uh, I, would, I would prefer not spending the money on consulting fees. And uh, through my campaign experience, it's amazing how many uh, folks in town have great ideas. I think we should pull together and pull those ideas together. Uh, we're, we, have, we have a community that knows the heartbeat of what's going on here. I think it would be an excellent location if I was to throw out my first idea. Um, and all, I mean, all the ideas are good. Let's pull them together first before we make any decisions. But uh, I would like to see us put a campus there. I, I think that we should really pursue OSU and have a real university campus there, uh, have some housing and amenities to support the campus. And I think it would be a, a great contribution and part of the economic development plan to have younger people in town and to have a qualified workforce for the businesses that move here. Next question. Mr. Herman, could you please respond to the assertion made earlier tonight that there are three drug deals a day going on in the hallways at Joy City Schools? Maybe I could do that pretty good. Um, I, you know, I hear, I hear a lot of conversations, all those things, and people speculate a lot of those things. I can tell you that, for example, there's a lot of great kids here tonight that are doing an assignment for class. We have a lot more good kids. Do we have kids that make bad decisions without a doubt? But being from a high school and being in that area, I, I would have to I would have to disagree with all that. Because we have a lot of really, really good kids that do real good things every day. Next question. This is for the candidates and Mr. Herman. Where do you uh, see Troy in ten years? Mrs. Rose? Well, I guess I would start with having an OSU campus somewhere in town. <laughs> um, I would like to see Hobart Arena flourishing and not being uh, something that costs the taxpayers money anymore. I would like to see uh, the, the golf course not costing taxpayers any money. I think that those businesses are huge and uh, are such a great contribution to us. I think that the, the town will grow by uh, uh, businesses coming here, the opportunity for economic development is huge. I would like to pursue more businesses that, that we have just exactly what they're looking for. Um, I've made comments before that if, if water is so plentiful, there's so many places in the country where water isn't. So let's make a list of companies that that would be a real good thing for them to have. Same with shipping. So I'm imagining that we have solved the drug problem. Uh, we've got more businesses in town paying higher jobs. And the place is really growing and doing great. Mr. Beamish. Well, I, I can see us in four years, ten years, that we always have to keep economic development as our number one priority, and that is to retain, expand, and grow business and industry to our community. We've done a great job. We can't sit back and say that's okay. We got to keep moving forward. Uh, we need to maintain our strong financial position or we can't do a lot of things that we've been able to do. So we need to have that cash reserve available and our AA1 uh, bond rating needs to be maintained. We need to increase the, the quality of life services and amenities that will attract the skilled workforce into our community and hold on to them. With wellness being so important, I think that's another key ingredient. And all those three things have to work in harmony with each other for us to continue to be uh, a very uh, quality community that I, I truly believe we are. Mr. Irwin. 
Oh, in ten, 10 years from now, education is kind of confusing right at the moment, but 10 years from now, the education world, I, I would think just from from my perspective and the buildings we have, we're going to have to look harder at our buildings. Other buildings are reaching age, we need, to, we need to see what we can do with them. Uh, that's really important. We need to continue to increase our technology with our kids. Uh, we can't get enough of that, so we keep working on that. We're working hard for, to increase our partnership with the businesses in town. I think it's very important because we have a lot of things going on in town and many of our kids don't realize it's available to them. So uh, hopefully we can get that connected where kids kids go to Troy High School, graduate, get a degree, and then come back to Troy and fill some of the job positions available. Next question. This is a question from the audience. Uh, are you, or for the mayoral candidates, uh, are you in favor of term limits? Mr. Beamish. Well, I'm seeking a fourth term, and I, that tells you something. I, I really do have the enthusiasm, the, the love, for, and the commitment to this community. I've tried to be loyal to this community communities ever since I walked in. Troy's a great place to live, work, raise a family. And my family was uh, raised here. Uh, I'd like to give back to a community that's given so much to me. And I think uh, as long as you're productive, as long as you're enthusiastic, as long as you're doing uh, things that are moving the city forward, uh, I think they can continue to serve a community in, a, in the best life. Mrs. Rose. Well, I would like to think that through the election process that you naturally have term limitations. But my experience in being here is that's not working too well. So I guess the true answer that I would have to that today until we do a better job of recruiting more leaders so that in an election you actually have to go and make a choice. So I would say yes, I would be a proponent for term limitations until some things change. Next question. This question is for the mayoral candidates. Would you support bringing another Mumford and Sons slash Gentleman of the Road type event to Troy in which alcohol is served? And also, with the success of the Mumford and Sons uh, concert tour, would you support or be against serving alcohol at other smaller events in Troy, including downtown festivals and Treasure Island? Mrs. Rose. I would have to say that I'm absolutely in favor of doing that again. I have, uh, I've, I've, I've even made, maintained my friendship with the production people so that if the opportunity ever presents itself, we can make that happen. Uh, that is an opportunity to bring lots of folks into town that maybe hadn't seen us before. I know as a business owner, there were so many people that came ahead of time to see our town and shop ahead of time and appreciate the beauty and how awesome it is. And then, of course, the event was just over the top and stellar. But, you know, things are still happening as a ripple effect from that. Uh, I think that there's an opportunity to, for nonprofits to expand what they might be doing, like the Troy Main Street. Uh, if we had a taste of Troy, I would be a supporter of having a beer garden to go with it. People come from all around. Our, our country was founded on individuals that partake in a little bit of that. I think, I think the first miracle was water into wine, wasn't it? <laughs> so I don't think it's the end of the world, and we've proven that it can be done responsibly. And it is a, a big economic boost that can happen for any town. I mean, if you look around, we would not be the only ones that uh, had a little bit of a, that experience through an event. Mr. Beamish. It was successful, hugely successful. It took hours and hours and days of planning to make that event possible, and a lot of different agencies and organizations uh, needed to come into play, and we did that. And we did it successfully, and we're still nationally, internationally known for that event. Just recently, we had a group from Walla Walla, Washington come in with their opportunity to have a GOTR event, and they came to us because they heard of the successes. It takes work. Uh, with the alcohol, uh, many people know I'm very much a family-oriented person. I think it can be done right, and we have done that in the Hobart Arena, and it's been very successful. At one time, I was skeptical, but I saw it can be done. On, on different situations uh, with controls, 
I think it could have a value and still uh, be a productive and a, a good way for business and industries uh, to, uh, uh, to bring business to the community. Thank you. Next question. For the candidates, what do you think is your opponent's greatest strength and weakness? Mr. Beamish. Well, I, I, you know, I like enthusiasm. I, I have to agree, you know, it's nice to see people running for office. Uh, I think it's healthy. Uh, so I'd like to see more people get involved. Uh, that is true. Uh, I always take the high road. I look at the good in everybody, and there are good in everybody. Uh, and so I, I really wouldn't look at somebody in a negative light. I think uh, uh, we need to always be respectful of each individual and kind towards one another. Uh, and I think when we do that, the world's a better place, not only our community. Um, so that, that's my answer. Mrs. Rose. I absolutely think Mayor Beamish is a fine man and has done a great job as being our mayor. I just think that it's time to let some new vision and new ideas and a new person take care of the business of the town. Um, in any, in any experience I've had in business over the years, new synergies or new board members, it's amazing how different it can be when there's a new set of eyes and there's, there's new ideas on the table. I think that status quo is uh, something that we need to, be, to guard against. And over time, um, the, I think that decisions are made without um, necessarily thinking of what the constituents that elected you really want anymore because you've been there a long time and you know what's best and I think that we have a tendency to quit listening so uh, I do, but I do think that he's done a great job I just think it's time for us to get some new new blood out there next question Troy is known for its history and unique downtown area uh, what would you do as mayor to preserve that and as mayor how would you attract new business and retain current business in our downtown area. Mrs. Rose. I'm definitely a supporter of history. Um, I think that we have some real gems in town. Some of them even concern me. It's been brought to my attention that there's, there's, there's a risk of losing some, some history that can't be replaced. Uh, concerns over, say for example, the Overfield Tavern. I mean, it's the first building in town. I think there might have been just kind of a small structure before that, but it was the first real building in town and the thoughts of losing that. I think the city should play a more active role. There are some great people in the, um, the, the historical society, but that's all volunteers. And if we ever risk losing any of the passionate people that are doing that, how will we make sure we've preserved what we have? As far as um, businesses staying in Troy, I really do think that we have attraction down. Someone asked me that about attraction. My gosh, our town is nothing but attractive. We have the cultural arts. We have the history. We have a, a river running through it. We have the infrastructure of, of I-70 and I-75. We've got, a, we've got a, an airport 15 minutes away. Uh, the only thing that we're missing is a college. I think that's an important piece of what we do. So as far as businesses attracting, I think we just need to ask them more. Mr. Beamish. I do want to say we did have a college, or Banner University was part of us for a number of years, and uh, it was a four-year college. Um, but talking about downtown, because that's passionate for me, uh, I've been many times said uh, that downtown is the living room of our community. It's where you want to gravitate your visitors and your guests into town. And I think it's been vibrant. Uh, we meet monthly as a downtown roundtable to discuss issues that are affecting the downtown. We do know we have a high occupancy rate in the first floors. We do also know that our second and third floors are being developed. In fact, I'm starting to see uh, condos and, and uh, uh, housing downtown, and that's a positive sign for a community to see that. Um, we, we have a lot, of, um, a lot of past. We live in the present. We have to look to the future. And so we do have to look at our downtown as we uh, renovate, upgrade, and preserve our buildings. And we do have loan programs that provide for that to happen. Next question. 
one of the duties as mayor is to select a service safety and service director. If elected under your administration, would you keep that current position or find someone different? And if you would find someone different, would you care to say who that is tonight? Do I get to go first? You want to flip a coin on Who's that one? Go on first? <laughs> Mr. Beamish. Oh, I get to go first. Well, all we have to do is look at where we are today. We're successful. We're held in high regard in the region. How do you do that? You hire good people that have expertise in their respective fields. I am proud to say that our administration, the city council, and our judicial system all work hand in hand as par in partners to make this city possible that we're growing, we are growing, and we're productive, and we are well respected in our region. Um, you know, we got to keep thinking economic development, number one, financial stability, number two, and we got to keep thinking amenities and services for our citizens and also for the outreach of people coming into our community. If we forget those, we're in trouble. Mrs. Rose. Well, it would seem as if that question was more directed to me, but thank you, Mayor Beamish, that it was your turn first. <laughs> I do know that uh, Mayor Beamish, when he was elected, he actually did replace uh, the gentleman that, had, that was serving that role and has since hired Patrick Titterington. Uh, I'll say on the campaign trail, I, I'm just going to be frank, people have asked me that question, you know, and, I, and, and I'm a business person. He's the guy that knows everything. That's the last person that I would let go. Um, I think that it's important that we uh, work together, and this is something I haven't had the experience to do yet, except uh, through the mayor's roundtable and some different things that we've done. I've had a good relationship with Patrick, and uh, I, at this point, wouldn't anticipate making that change, uh, but I do think that we'd have to make sure we played together well. Next question. Also for the candidates, what is your understanding of the true role of mayor and the authority you have as mayor? Mrs. Rose. Well, uh, in looking into my decision to run for mayor, I learned a lot about how government works in uh, cities. Uh, I started looking for our charter, and I couldn't find one. I went crazy looking for the charter, and I found out that we are a statutory government and we do not have a city charter. Um, for example, I think if people understand in Piqua and Tip City, they have a city charter. They have a board of directors, and then the board of directors, which is elected by the people, appoint a city manager. And then the mayor's role is that of a uh, figurehead. And then, of course, city council handles the legislative. In Troy, with a statutory government, the mayor actually has quite a bit of strength. The mayor is the CEO of the town. And the mayor appoints someone to be the um, safety and service director. And so the, the entire overseer is, in fact, the mayor's role. Uh, and then, of course, we have city council, and they are the, the legislative branch. So, and we fall under the, um, the Ohio code. So it's, it's just a little bit different. So yes, I think that the mayor has a pretty strong role in, in Troy being the CEO of the town. Mr. Beamish. Being mayor is hard work. It's a full-time job if you do it right. Uh, and I hope I've proven that. Uh, you have to have a strong working knowledge of city government, even state government and national government. We are statutory uh, uh, and we are three branches of government. We have the executive, the judicial, and the legislative branch, all working in harmony for the betterment of this community. I think you have to have some leadership and understanding of your community and uh, be involved. I think you have to have some proven uh, fiscal responsibility. Check. I think we've done that. You have to be successful in reaching out to people for trade missions and other relationships in building business and industry. And we've uh, made over, in the last five years, 261 different retention and expansion visits to say thank you for being a part of us. Uh, you have to have high ethics. Um, you know, you don't want to have any conflict of interest. And you really need to have, in my personal opinion, long-term commitment and loyalty to the community that you're serving. Thank you. Next question. 
This question is for the mayoral candidates. Uh, parking in downtown Troy uh, can be a problem, especially if you live and work there. I can attest to that. Uh, what would you do as mayor to make parking easier and more available for those that live and work in the downtown area other than what is already currently being done or enforced? Do you support the idea of a parking garage? Mr. Beamish. We've looked into parking garages. They're very costly and it would take a lot uh, for people to pay to use those. Uh, we try to look at uh, different parking areas, and we still are investigating new parking areas. It may take a little bit of a walk, but that's wellness. It's recreational, and it's good for us to take a walk every now and then. Uh, and, and so I think it's really neat to have the vibrancy of a downtown where you may have to look for a parking spot because that means, you know, things are happening downtown. I think that's a good thing. I park in different places, my wife parks in different places, and we walk to get to the, the business that we want to see. And we're okay with that because we need that ex exercise at our age. Mrs. Rose. I actually believe that we need a parking structure downtown Troy. But I don't necessarily think we need one because the people who live there and the people that work there need to find a place to park. We're actually doing a good job of finding that now. But from an economic development standpoint, I have a personal experience. If any of you are familiar with Austin Landing, it's a huge development just south of the Dayton Mall. And the, the gentleman in charge of all of that, or their last name is Gunlock. They are one of the largest commercial owners of a property in the state of Ohio. And I happened to have them in one of my buildings twice for 45 minutes. I gave them all the ODOT records and said, this is it. 23,000 cars a day go around this circle. This is an amazing town. They agreed with everything, and they said to me, but there's not enough parking. It is an economic development thing. The people downtown have it figured out. It's the people even in our own town that live just outside of the downtown area that, that won't come downtown because it's hard to find a place to park. It is a part of economic development to have a parking garage, and I think that it would help for people to come here to not fear they won't find a place to park. Next question. The chairman has actually informed me that this will also be the last question before we begin our closing statements. And this is actually a question that we ask at each and every Meet the Candidates night. How much money have you or do you plan on spending on your campaign? Who is your largest contributor and how much? And how many yard signs are you planning on putting out during this campaign? And this is for all three candidates or issues. Mr. Herman, I'll let you go first. Okay. Um, we figure about 50 to 75 yard signs we'll put out. We'll pick them up, though, because we like to reuse them. Um, <laughs> we're probably, with mailing and postage, we're probably going to be right around $5,000 on our campaign. As far as contributions, a lot of our, a lot of our contributions, quite frankly, the way, way we have it set up is we come through a, uh, our vending profits go into a campaign and we put checks directly into that. So we're not taking money out of any, any operating funds whatsoever. Mrs. Rose. Uh, I, I purchased 500 signs, but I'm in marketing, and I, th I thought that worked for me. <laughs> and, uh, and my budget uh, is about $4,500. Right now, it might be riding close to 4000 but I planned about $4,500. And I would be the largest contributor to my campaign to date. Mr. Beamish. My wife's the largest contributor. She controls my finances. <laughs> But I, I will tell you, I, I will probably spend less than half of that. Uh, right now, we look for maybe 100, 130 signs out. Uh, that's more than I've ever put out, but that's what we're doing. Uh, most of our, uh, the money that we're spent on postage uh, and stationery and getting uh, messages out that way. Um, I don't know what more I can say. That's pretty much uh, what our budget is, about 20 23, I have a great treasurer that takes care of that for me, and, but I do know it's about half of what uh, uh, Patty's is, 
uh, but we're doing uh, probably spending a lot less money. Okay, that does conclude the question and answer portion. So candidates, you now will give your closing statements from your seat. You'll have 90 seconds to give your statement. And we were, are going in reverse order from the opening salvo. So Mrs. Rose, you go first. Okay. First, I would like to thank you, Mayor Beamish, for your nearly 12 years as mayor. Election day is May 5th. I believe it's time for new eyes on the job for a fresh and relevant vision. It's time for new ears on the job, for better listening of the people. It's time for new conversations, for sharing more ideas, and fresh new perspectives. I believe it's time for a business leader to oversee the business of our city. I assure you that I will not guard the status quo. In fact, I don't represent the good old boys system at all. My name is Patty Rose, and I invite all of you here tonight and ask all your friends to vote for me to be the next mayor of this great city of Troy, Ohio. Thank you very much. Mr. Beamish. During the past 12 years, our economic development efforts have encouraged 13 new or expanded national and international companies to Troy and have increased our business payroll to $139 million. Uh, in just the past five years, we've created 2,700 new jobs. And to continue uh, for us to move forward, we need to maintain and we need to work hard to increase our skilled workforce. We need to invest in those amenities, provide a quality school system, offer housing to meet all of our demands, and have an solid base for jobs and business and industry. These are key ingredients. We have a strong financial position as reflected by our AA1 bond rating and our positive carryover balance. Through sound and prudent leadership, the city of Troy is committed to continuing that. There are many demands on the mayor's job, and it's been a full-time job that I've loved. I've demonstrated that I can give a commitment. I demonstrated my time, and I hope I've demonstrated over the years my loyalty to this great city. I am ready. I'm willing and I'm able to continue to serve for one more term. And I would appreciate your vote and support in the May 5th primary election. Thank you for being here tonight. Mr. Herman. In closing, I'd like to thank you again for the opportunity tonight. In summary, we're asking for a yes vote for a 5.9 mill renewal levy. This levy will not increase your taxes. We're not asking for more money. In fact, remember, even though it's a 5.9 mill levy, it only collects at 3.8 mills. These funds will, funds will be used for general operating expenses and include supplies, utility, wages, fuel, and any other general expense. This levy has been renewed five times. It represents 6% of our total budget. Our renewal levy is supported and endorsed by the Troy Area Chamber of Commerce. I just think that's important because we, we, we work with businesses hard in town. Please remember there is zero increase in taxes, no increase in taxes. Thank you, and please vote yes to help us continue our ability to maintain the quality education that our Torrey City School students receive. We really do a lot of good things for our kids in Torrey City Schools. Thank you. Thank you. You are reminded that by law you're allowed to vote early, and if you go to the Miami County Board of Elections website at the bottom of the page, you'll find a link which will give you some times that the office hours will be open, and you can go vote early if you'd like. Thank you very much for attending this evening. Thank you, candidates, for a fine job. Have a safe trip home, and remember to vote on May 5th.